Hello everyone, welcome to Reach Goals. Today I'm going to talk about the system design of Amazon bestseller rank or sometimes called as BSR, right? I'm going to cover two important topics and it is a popular interview question too. So the topics are uh, how to build the infrastructure for BSR with sky scalability and low latency. The second thing is how to fetch the BSR data from the sales data, right? So if you're not familiar with what BSR is, you can see the small widget on the screen and at uh, this screen, if you go into the product description page of Amazon and if you scroll a little bit down, you can see at the bottom, right? So basically what it does is it provides the best selling product in certain categories, right? So before going into the topic, let's also understand what Amazon talks about BSR. According to Amazon, the bestsellers calculation is based on Amazon.com sales and is updated hourly to reflect recent and historical sales of every item sold on Amazon.com. So what it implies is they don't consider the future sales. So they are considering only what has been sold earlier and what is happening at this point of moment, right? So this gives an indication on how to build this product, right? So let's talk about the system design of BSR system. So you have a client and the client in turn connects to the CDN system and the CDN in turn connects to the load balances. So in the CDN, I can have the JavaScript files or the static HTML files or the static images so that it can be deployed up across the globe and you know the closest client can is access very easily. In that way, the performance is improved and the latency is improved. So the purpose of having the load balancer is you might be getting n number of traffics to the different app servers, right? So the app servers cannot withstand those loads. So if you have a load balancer in between, I can diversify the traffic across multiple app servers. In that way, the performance of app server is increased. And the other thing is, if I have a load balancer in between, and let's say if one of the app server goes down, right? And still we can live with the rest of the app server. So it provides a high availability to the client, right? So from the load balancer, it connects to the microservices. So I have a service called place order, which takes the order from the client or from the customer and it takes that order to the order management system, right? So I put this place order in, in a Docker container so that it can be horizontally scaled, right? If I want to have a horizontal scalability, I can have a Kubernetes cluster or orchestrate, orchestrate it with the help of Kubernetes to scale up or scale down, right? And the place order in turn connects to the order DB where I'm going to capture all the order which has been created from the customers, right? So now this all this order has to be transferred to the order management system if I want to ship the product, right? So I'm having a queue in between. So in that way, you know, it is going to provide a fault tolerant system. Let's say if OMS goes down, still my data can be kept in the queue and based on the need, I can push it into the order management system. But only thing is we have to make sure the queue is not getting overflow, right? So order management system does multiple operations. One is it helps to ship the product. It makes sure the notifications are sent to the customer, right? So whenever there is an, whenever there is an order is created, uh, the order goes to the queue and in turn goes to the order, order management system, right? Order management system ships the product and that's where the sale is created, right? So we need to know that information if you want to generate the BSR data, right? Let's say a customer places an order and it goes to the order table and from there it goes to the OMS, right? So now OMS decides to ship the product. As soon as the product is shipped, the sale is created, right? So we have the information of the product ID at what date the sale has been happening, whether the item is shipped or not, right? At the same time, there could be a possibility the item could be returned. Even in that case, we need to know what is the order, what is the ID of the product, what is the product description and at what time or what date the product has been returned, etc. Right. Once we have that information, we can pass those log information or messages to the queue. From there, you can pass it to the Hadoop cluster. Right. So the reason I'm having a Hadoop cluster is the Hadoop cluster can do a parallel processing of data. Right. So if you do a parallel processing, we can get the output as soon as possible. Right. The second thing is there are a lot of tools and tools available in the Hadoop, Hadoop where you can write the query to generate the data as soon as possible. And also you can get the streaming data from the queue so that it is easy to get the data very quickly and we can do the fast processing. Right. So once the data is processed at the Hadoop level, we have to take that output to the different location. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to send it to a sanitizer 
where I can process the data again and figure out if there is any issues in the data where we are going to send finally to the customer, right? So let's say if there is some issue in the sanitization, we can fix it, we can understand with the we can understand whether it is a right data or wrong data. Based on that information, we can make a decision to send it to the front end, right? So after the data has been sanitized, I have to send it to the RESTful Web Services where the customer can utilize it, right? So now I cannot use the sanitized data to put in the database like Oracle or uh, MySQL Server because it is going to be a time consuming, right? Instead, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put that data into the Redis cluster. Redis cluster, as we all know, it is an in-memory database kind of a stuff, right? So we can give the key and we can get the right information from the Redis cluster. And also for fault tolerant and high availability, I'm going to have a copy of the same data, a different Redis cluster, so that, you know, if one cluster goes wrong, we can use make use of the different cluster, right? Say now, let's say you have the right information in the Redis cluster, like key value pair, where the key is, the book ID or the item ID where the value is mm, related to the category and the ranking, right? Now we can create another web service. Look at the green color. Uh, the other web service is something like, you know, get BSR where we pass the item ID and it turn and it turn and connects to the Redis cluster to give the right information, right? So if you look into that, how the value which actually will be stored is something like this. You will have an ID as a key and you'll have the category and you'll have the rank of that category and you'll have the subcategory rank and and the rank of under the subcategories, right? So if you look at the Amazon.com, they mostly give one primary category and two or more subcategories, right? So let's see how to get the BSR data. So if you look into the screen, uh, we have already noticed that, you know, Amazon is using the current sales as well as a little bit of historical data to figure out the ranking and they are not using any of the future sales or any pre predictive algorithm to figure out the sales ranking, right? So let's keeping in this mind, let's see some of the examples. So in this, if you see, uh, it is a book which is high output management and this book was published in the year August 29th, uh, 1995, right? So still it is a, one of the most popular book and you can see the ranking as 2187 in the books category and it is number 15, 44 and number two in different categories, right? So if you look into this example, uh, this book was um, published on October 15, 2019 and it is the same day where I am recording this video. I noticed that this book was uh, getting into the rank number one within one hour of with, within one hour when it was into the uh, Amazon.com, right? And it was ranking almost uh, number one in throughout the day or even next couple of days, right? So it clearly gives an indication that Amazon.com is using the current data to figure out the sales ranking, right? So in this screen, let's go step by step and to see how the BSR data can be generated, right? So as we talked earlier, whenever there is a sale in the OMS, what happens here is a log is entered into the HDFS, which is Hadoop Distributed File System, right? Similarly, when there is a return item, a log is entered into the system to make it as a negative count, right? So what happens here is, as I said, Hadoop system does a parallel process to select the net item sold in last one hour or in couple of days, whatever it is based on their algorithm, right? So it gives a return item like, you know, the item ID, the category rank and subcategory rank and subcategory rank, right? So from UI, we can have a web service and we can pass the item ID and query the Redis cluster to get the right information, right? That's what we have seen in the past. So let's have a sample log to figure out how BSR data is calculated, right? So if you look into the Hadoop system, you, you will see the logs coming like this, right? So we have in this example, I have two items. One is ending with uh, item ID 84 and the other one is the item ending with 45, right? So you will see tons and tons of logs getting into the Hadoop system, right? So at the same time, there is a pro parallel process which is happening at the back end to figure out uh, the number of items sold within last one hour or number of items sold within last one day, right? So now at, at one point of time, we will have an output something like what is an item sold uh, from 11.20 to 12.20, right? So we can easily figure out the data as uh, for the item number, which is ending with 884, total sales was five, and you can give a rank as one, right? Now, let's say if you, if you have an item 745, which is ending, and if you look at the total sales, it is four and can be ranked number two. So in that way, you know, uh, lots and lots of processes happening in the Hadoop cluster, and you know, it can be figured out for a specific number of items, and it can be given as an output. Now, as we talked about, there is a sanitizer, and it figures out the right data, and it gives to the Redis cluster. So when you see the output will be given something like ID and all 
uh, let's say if you want to categorize across all the books then it we can say it as an all and now in this case it is 5 which is the uh, ranking number and within the business it is ranking as a 3 or within the software industry it is ranking as 1 where business and software industries are subcategories right so that is how the data goes into the redis cluster so now from the ui we can have a web service where the web service can give the item id as an input and that can be queried from the redis cluster and it can be given as an output to the ui right so that is how the system works and that is how the bsr data is calculated